The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contests, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. You know, I don't give Burger King credit for much, but I will say their breakfast burritos are phenomenal. I love their burgers, man. I don't mess with their breakfast, but... Yeah, no, the I'll, double cheeseburgers are pretty good. No, the mm-hmm. Whoppers aren't bad. But anyways, um, they've just been catching a lot of flack here with the terrible attempt at a taco. And uh, what else was it they tried to do? Something else that people said was terrible. Anyways, uh, so today... We're here apparently to talk about aliens, and please forgive us for being rude. We got two podcasts to do today uh, because if you're a a member of our Patreon, then guess what? We're doing a Patreon exclusive podcast. So we mm-hmm. got two to do today. We're trying to eat some breakfast in between our regular full time radio gigs. So we were like, hey, let's go ahead and knock out this weird Wednesday, and we're talking about some aliens today. JP, uh, as usual, is. Kind of in charge of the weird Wednesday. So, JP, what specifically, like extraterrestrials, what are we talking about here? Well, man, you know, I haven't delved into a UFOlogy for a while. Uh, for the longest time, it was my bread and butter, man. I was I was reading Zachariah Sitchin's work, you know, about the Anunnaki coming from the planet Nibiru, you know, genetically engineering humanity, which, no, oh, excuse my hiccup. I still put a lot of stock into it. I know Zachariah. So, oh, Zachariah Sitchin, I got the hiccups, pal, has been uh, widely discredited with his uh, translation of the Sumerian tablets, which purportedly talk about these these extraterrestrial beings coming to Earth from other planets and what have you. But uh, why has he been discredited? Just recent, uh, you know, just scholars don't like the fact that uh, you know, he's making these wild claims that goes against everything they've been teaching and all this stuff, just trying to rewrite human history. So, of course, they discredit his translation of these ancient texts. Where do you stand on that? I, I'm no uh, I'm no expert on, you know, <laughs> the Sumerian language, but I think there's enough uh, evidence in ancient uh, hieroglyphs and ruins and all this kind of stuff to really to put a lot of credence in the fact that we've been visited all throughout human history by beings not of this world, be it a planet in space, be it extra dimensional, being some somewhere on the grand plane of uh, existence. Well, I do suppose if, if they were trying to cover up extraterrestrials and this guy was basically uh, exposing these translations that proved extraterrestrials to, to be true, or at least get the idea going, I suppose they probably would try to discredit him. Right. Right. Well, as we've said before, the academic community, man, I mean, they're very dogmatic. They're very just close minded, would you say? Right. You don't go against the, the established uh, school of thought. So they just don't like you to challenge what's accepted as science. No, nah, man, nobody does. But now, I, I mean, you've actually got people, you know, military personnel coming out with reports of these astonishing aircraft that they can't, you know, touch. It's basically like, Comparing the the latest greatest you know aircraft we've got in the military, comparing that to a horse and buggy, we're in the horse and buggy. You know what I mean? Hmm. So I mean these these things are moving, they're jucking, they're jiving, and I said, what what got me to thinking about it again? Uh, Joe Rogan recently had Dan Aykroyd talking about his UFO encounters. I never uh, knew he was so big into that. Oh yeah, dude, UFOs, uh, Sasquatch. Uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd is just an investigator of the uh, of the unknown, man. And he also has a great brand of vodka, by the way. I haven't tried it, but it's Crystal Skull Vodka. I really want to get some. I wonder if that's named after like the Mayan. Part. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about, dude. And they like they actually distill it over crystals, and I I don't know. It's, it's do wild. they really though? Yeah, yeah, man. Dan Aykroyd wouldn't lie to me. Would he not though? No, he would not. He's a he's a man of honor. Is he a man of honor though? He's a great guy, and he feel like you can just do that for anything. No, no, no. He's a great guy, great man, and I I think a lot of him, especially late at night, you know. But um, yeah, and uh, Joe Rogan, I forget the guy's name, but he had a commander with the Navy or Air Force or whatever, man, that was just you know just flying, and these things are just like you know going, doing their thing, and they start talking about the uh, the propulsion systems, which my guy Riley Martin was talking about, you know, 20, 30 years ago, but we're finally 
getting a rudimentary understanding of this like anti-gravity uh, propulsion system, man, and it's astounding stuff. Like I said, it makes us look like we're in the Stone Age compared to what they have access to. Well, I mean, if they could reach us before we could reach them, then they are more technical. They're, they're technically more advanced, you know? Oh, yeah. And they've been, I mean, there's accounts going all the way back to Columbus and further than that. You know, I mean, Colum- Columbus and extraterrestrials. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he saw saw these uh, these vehicles, you know, uh, emerging from the water. I, I forget the exact text, but yeah, uh, Columbus, as he was sailing to America, is, is kind of funny. It's, you know, just a couple of days after Columbus Day. But yeah, he he encountered UFOs and he actually wrote about it in his uh, journal, in his log or whatever. Huh. Very interesting. So. Uh, do you think tw- as we get into 2020, like that's going to be the year? 2020 is like the year where we're going to really start getting into the extraterrestrial stuff, maybe reveal some information? I mean, it's it's almost getting to the point to where they have no choice. I mean, radar is like, it's not just, you know, a, a snapshot with a Polaroid anymore. I mean, they're capturing these things on radar, things they can't explain, things beyond our understanding. I don't think it's, you know, like China or Russia has developed something this advanced, man, and we're that far behind the curve, you know. Right. And uh, so, uh, which unless there is a, an elite group of humans probably living somewhere where around Antarctica that, you know, have been developing this stuff for like hundreds of years. But, Do you think what Nazis are out there? Uh, Nazis, perhaps some uh, factions of the Illuminati may have people who've, you know, been making use of like Da Vinci's work and followed that up, you know, has the Tesla uh, uh, technology and all that kind of stuff, which as we've talked about before, uh, Donald Trump has a lot of uh, Nikola Tesla's work. Allegedly, he time travels with it. Yeah. Alleged, but, I mean, it could just be sitting in a basement somewhere in a box. I mean, yeah, it's totally alleged whether he used it or not. But I mean, he yeah, he does have it. If you want to hear more on that, don't forget we do have a podcast about Donald Trump, the time traveler. Yeah, it's, it's uh, suppo- pretty again stuff. allegedly, but yeah, check that out. There's a really cool uh, theory out there about Donald Trump being a time traveler, and we discuss it. You should check it out on. Actually, I believe to hear that though, you're gonna have to go to our YouTube channel. I don't know if you're listening on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, but I guess to go back that far, you have to because they, we, you know, what we keep two or three up, and then they get deleted. Mm-hmm. But you can go to our YouTube and go back and listen to any podcast we've pretty much ever done. But yeah, so do you think that uh, time travel? I've always thought it was an, a, that extraterrestrials could be us from the future. Yeah, time that's a, that's an interesting theory. Not saying there aren't extraterrestrials out there, but as far as the ones that we see, the grays and the the common ones that seem to be experimenting, they because a lot of times it seems that extraterrestrials are doing more observing than they are actual interaction. Of course, you have the the abduction stories and the probing and things like that, which could just be studying the difference of our bodies as they've evolved, you know, Mm -hmm. because living in space, I'm not an expert on any of this. So this is all just speculation and looking back on things I've heard, but living in space would definitely change our physiology. You know, we would look different. We would, we would be way different. And so I've always thought like, what if extraterrestrials, the ones that we see most commonly are actually us just from the future, coming back to observe events, coming back to, I mean, like, what about the Mothman? What if that was extraterrestrial, just observing that bridge collapse? Yeah, somebody was telling me the other day, they think he's basically just the angel of death. Oh, really? Yeah, like like biblical kind of stuff. I've thought perhaps the Mothman, like I said, was extraterrestrial. Perhaps he came back, like they were looking through public records, and he just, you know, I don't know if it was a suit or mm-hmm. craft, but he come, came back and watched the bridge collapse, I guess, to get more information, to make yeah. sure maybe they want to, maybe, maybe, maybe we actually get to a point in humanity where we want to make sure that our historical records are actually historically correct, and we're going back in time and rewriting our own history books with actual factual accounts of what happened. Yeah, that's, that's possible. But it's uh, it's interesting that, you know, the big UFO like phenomenon craze really started popping off in the 50s. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that wasn't long after the nuclear explosions like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So a lot of people think once they saw we had this technology, that's when they really started taking notice. Probably like, oh, shit, they could destroy themselves. Maybe mm-hmm. we need to observe. Maybe it's kind of like how we take endangered species and put them in zoos and make them breed to say we basically force them to be saved. Mm-hmm. Instead of letting them you destroy themselves, maybe that's what the extraterrestrials are doing with us. They're like, hey, these people are 
crazy. They're going to destroy themselves. So let's uh, let's let's interfere where we can and do what we have to to keep them alive. Yeah, I mean, it's like if uh, if we started noticing that gorillas in their native habitat were building machine guns, we'd probably you know be like, oh, this this could be an issue. We should pay attention to this. Right. Uh, well, I wonder if perhaps maybe humanity is. Just a few humans left, you know, like, I mean, then by a few, I don't mean like George, Bobby and Johnny, like three or four. I'm talking a couple hundred, a couple thousand, but we've gotten very technologically advanced. But in doing so, we destroyed our planet. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what if we're going back in time to kind of keep an eye on that? And and I don't know, but it'd be one of those things. I don't know. We've gotten into the question of time travel, of the implications of going back and changing anything. Like, would it change your future or would it create a new timeline? All of that. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I, I just think the the thought that they are us from the future, just coming back to observe us, is is pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's wild stuff, man. I don't know, but there's definitely more and more credible uh, sources for this UFO activity. And again, I don't know if it's you know something from another planet. You know, I mean, you know yourself that I, I ponder a lot on like space fraud and the idea of. If there's ever even the possibility for interstellar travel, that's why I, I really go into the interdimensionals. But it's still, it's a nonetheless, man, there's stuff out there, stuff beyond our uh, our explanation, our understanding. And it's it's doing stuff and it's it's not deniable anymore. You Are know? you saying that you've had a bit of a change of heart? No, I'm not saying I've, I'm having a change of heart. You know, it's uh, there. there's definitely stuff happening. It's just a matter of where it's coming from and. Who's perpetrating it, or where what's do you think it's coming from? Because what I'm saying is, you've always basically said that you believe in inter- interdimensional mm-hmm. uh, extraterrestrials, not interplanetary extraterrestrials, more or less. I'm going to say you said you didn't believe in it, but you definitely. Anytime I would talk about extraterrestrials, you would always make it a point to go mm-hmm. toward uh, like multiple dimensions, not right. planetary. So. But it sounds like what you're saying is now maybe you're giving more credence to the, the idea that there could be interplanetary, inter solitary. I don't even know the terminology for this shit. <laughs> right. But, you know, there, there could be uh, extraterrestrials out there from other galaxies and such. I mean, I, I always, you know, keep my mind open to the uh, possibility. Not like really. Said, you don't keep your mind open to the possibility of the world not being flat. You're pretty dead set on that one. Well, I, th- I think there's too much evidence to really just sweep it under the rug. Like I said, I'm a I'm not scientific enough to you know make this strong case for it. I, I need to put together a presentation, but I am an advocate for the possibility of the big lie that they could perpetrate a, a falsehood on that big a scale. Oh, I agree with you on the sense of that. My thought is that the flat Earth theory is the big lie that they spread that to see how well they could spread misinformation if they needed to mislead the public or steer public opinion on something or whatnot. I feel like I could get behind the idea that the CIA or whoever in the government started that falsehood just to see how fast and how wide it would spread. Yeah, man. I mean, it could be a psyop. Absolutely. I mean, this UFO stuff could be a psyop as well. Again, setting up some kind of interplanetary attack that makes us fall under a, a one world government. I mean, that's yeah. another thing I'm, I'm a very strong proponent of that the government is, you know, uh, when you say the government, that's so broad, though. Do you mean the actual United States government or do you mean secret organizations within the government? Well, I mean, you, you have a breakaway like shadow governments within the government. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think it's being discussed like in the Oval Office or anything. I mean, it might be, but. But like no. you don't think President Trump or Obama any of them would be in on it? It'd be it'd be more exclusive to like the people who really run the world. Well, I mean, if anything, I think uh, Trump would be against it because he's you know taking a stand against globalism and the ultimate end goal of this uh, you know UFO stuff would be globalism, just some big catastrophe to unite us under one world government. So, so you're totally thinking, um, you're, you're totally thinking Watchmen. I, I think it's a possibility, man. Like one like I said, big I event that happens that basically makes people want to unite with everyone else in the world to fight this common enemy. Maybe. I mean, like I said, man, I don't have one big thesis that explains everything. I have certain things I lean towards uh, more than others. In some ways, the way that some people thought that uh, the whole 9-11 False catastrophe flag. was a, was was fake and that right. it was just to unite us to gain support to go get oil. Pretty much. Yeah, man, to, to occupy the the Middle East, absolutely. 
So you think maybe, perhaps that could be similar, like they're going to bring the right they're, yeah, they're just, getting the thoughts of extraterrestrials in our heads now. And then maybe an extraterrestrial attack or something is going to happen to make us want to be united to fight this, yeah, this threat. And then pretty much we just fall for it, hook, line and sinker. And we're just like a one world government. And then once the threats eradicated, it's just like, well, we're already here. So mm-hmm. yeah, nine 11 on a worldwide uh, scale. Yeah. That's a scary thought. And again, I'm not saying I, I, there is some fishy stuff with 9-11. I, I'm not going to say what I do and don't believe. I would love to have a podcast about 9-11. Yeah, dude. I'm not going to say that I do believe it was you know, set up, and I'm not going to say that I believe that it wasn't. I'm just going to say that there are some sketchy things that happen, and I would love to have a full-on discussion about that with someone who really has a, a grasp on all angles of the of the event and the, the ways it seems to have been faked or 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 whatever you want to call it. it's I don't even know what to call it. I, I think a lot of it had to do with the criminal uh, criminal activity within the government. Again, like, you know, shadow organizations in the government. I think a lot of it had to do with incompetence at, at certain levels. I, I watched a great piece on the, uh, the New Yorker had like an Amazon series just talking about how just like miscommunication between the FBI and the CIA let these uh, hijackers, you know, pretty much do their thing, you know, so... Mm. It's 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 a it's a lot that goes into it. Like I don't Cheney know. Making it, NORAD stand down that day and that's that's bizarre. Yeah, I, like I said, there's a lot of things that happen. I used to be one of these people. Whenever someone talked about 9/11 being fake or mm-hmm. being staged, whatever you want to refer to it as, I don't know conspiracy talk, so I don't know if you you know what you would call it, but it being faked is what I'm going to say. Right. But um, and see, I don't I don't like to say any of that. I really don't even like to. I don't know how to to word it because I hate saying fake because I because I, it's not fake. People died. I mean, yeah, you don't want to. There's nothing yeah. fake about that. There were lots of people that died. But I guess what I mean is that it wasn't it was a deception. Yeah. A false flag operation um, to a, achieve a certain goal, you know, yeah, to push an initiative. I used to be one of those people that used to. It would get very defensive when someone would talk about me like, no, you, that's not what happened at all. That's just. But when you really do some research and you really start, you know, watching these these people that have, you know, taken the event and broke it down and just mm-hmm. as, so there's a lot of things out there that make no sense yeah. with that whole thing. So I'm trying to word it right because I don't want to sound insensitive in the sense of, yeah, dude. you know, 3000 people died and that's not a joke. And that did happen. So regardless of whether it was the United States government or the. You know, the Taliban or Osama bin Laden or George Bush, still 3,000 people died. So I'm trying to make sure. That's why if I sound like I if I sound like someone who barely knows how to speak English, number one, I'm terrible at it. But number two, I'm trying my best to make sure I don't sound insensitive to the issue because it's still not something to, you know, take lightly. Yeah, dude. I mean, it was a tragedy. A lot of people died. But at the same time, there were a lot of vested uh, interests I said, uh, I mean, uh, Building 7, man, that's that's a, a big honker, you know? Well, and, and if it was a false flag operation, then you almost it's almost like you owe it to those that who lost their lives to expose the truth, if there's a truth to be exposed. No, I think there's definitely, there, there's always, man, there's always dirty deeds going on behind the scenes because there's too many people profiting. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'm broke as hell, but nonetheless. Amen on that. Yeah. But no, I, I ain't going to blow nothing up to make no money. That's awful. Unfortunately, some will. But so extraterrestrials, as we kind of come to the close of, of this podcast. So you're saying you you for sure are starting to think that there may be more to the extraterrestrial. Like, like whether or not they're, they're real or not is not the case. You're saying that you do think something is going to come to a head but with like the government and extraterrestrials. Yeah, man, there there ain't never been any doubt in my mind that uh, you know this technology exists, uh, anti gravity propulsion, things of this nature. It's just a matter of the origin, where it's coming from. Uh, origin, where it's coming from. That's the same thing. But anyway, not nah, just a uh, and the uh, the the means for which it's being used, what it's being used for. You know, I mean, is this reverse engineered uh, technology from the days of the Nazis that they got? From DMT beings, uh, from their psychedelic trips? Is it uh, beings from the planet Nibiru? Uh, is it a giant case of space fraud just used to socially engineer us and create a one world government? I don't know, man, but I'm, I'm investigating further and further. A giant you know, case of space fraud. Sounds like you can go down to Costco. Yeah, I want to get a giant case of uh, space fraud, please. 
What aisle is that on? Yes, I would like the uh, Buzz Aldrin flavor. Thank you. I'm more of a Neil Armstrong, but, you know, to each their own, I guess. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about extraterrestrials? JP here seems to definitely think something's going to come of it, be it real life extraterrestrials or just a just a big thing that happens that involves extraterrestrials, supposedly. Supposedly. I mean, there, um, there yeah. are beings beyond our plane of existence. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, I'm not saying there's no doubt, but I, I do think there's beings beyond our existence. And I'm actually trying to, uh, towards the end of the year, go out to uh, out west to some UFO sort of areas and maybe, you know, see something for myself hmm. after the first of the year, proposedly. Well, anyways, what do you think? Extraterrestrials, yay or nay? Interdimensional, yay or nay? Fake government uh, cover-up used to just get us to fall in line with this one-world government ideology? Yes or no? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Let's open up discussion on extraterrestrials, and we'll get into it more on a future Weird Wednesday. In the meantime, patrons, don't forget, a Patreon-exclusive podcast will be available today. In fact, if you're watching on YouTube, it may already be available. Don't forget, if you ever want to get the jump on these, YouTube podcasts are generally not published until later on into the night because I have work to do during the day, and then I have a newborn daughter. And so in order for me to be able to sit down and edit it, I usually don't even get to it till about 7 o'clock at night. So if you want to listen to these sooner, you can always uh, subscribe on SoundCloud. You can find us on iTunes. We're also on Spotify. So there are lots of different ways to listen aside from yeah. YouTube. But regardless of which way you listen, just make sure you uh, check that out if you're a patron. And if you're not a patron, as I said at the beginning of the video, patreon.com slash the podcasting dead. Check us out for more content and soon to be merchandise. We're working really hard on that, I promise. Yes, we are. We're in talks with a graphic designer trying to get a dope logo that we can all agree is a dope, dope logo. Yeah, dope logo. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And until next time, don't forget tomorrow's mail call. So ask your questions, but we'll talk to you then. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the podcasting dead. Showing sure up.